Herzlich willkommen beim 36. DocFest München. A very, very warm welcome to the 36th DocFest Munich, to our online edition um, DocFest Munich at Home 2021, here from the Silbersaal in the Deutschen Theater, um, one of our locations that we usually use. My name is Daniel Lang, um, and I'm going to be your host for this Q&A. Um, I'm very, very happy to be talking to the makers of the film Comuna, the Commune. Um, the director Jakob Jeleni is with us, and also the scriptwriter Pavel Smykatz Maikau. I'm sorry, uh, I hope that was correct. Um, and the film is uh, going to premiere as an international premiere um, in our main competition, Doc International. Um, a very, very warm welcome to both of you, um, Jakub and Pavel. Hello. Hello, thank you for your invitation. Hi, greetings. Hello. Um, it's a pleasure having you here. Um, I've really found your film really, really interesting. Um, and the, the group around the artist and philosopher Marcel Strico was like true underground. Um, and I was wondering, I'm not sure that many people know or knew about this. Um, and how did you unearth this amazing story? Pavel, please start. Because Pavel is actually from Košice. He uh, knew the story much earlier than me. <laughs> I uh, found that story kind of through people who also uh, were part of underground mm -hmm. or distant culture in Slovakia. Mm -hmm. but is from Košice. Yeah, well, um, in my hometown, um, the story of Marcel Stiko or him as a figure is, is sort of a myth, you, you could say. Um, but um, um, I think it's interesting to see that uh, there's something about this, uh, this particular uh, place in time where, where the story um, um, was discovered by many initiatives. He was given some official prizes from um, lo local uh, establishment governments. So um, somehow the, the time has come to to tell to tell the story and, and to, to make make the story more visible. Uh, but that's more of a like a synchronicity uh, that we also decided to to start this project and to. But basically, tell the story of, of Marcel Stiko and and his friends. Mm -hmm. um, but um, in the rest of the country, uh, the, the western part of the country, the, the story is much more unknown. So even in the local Slovak context, this is a, a, a new mm -hmm. uh, a new story to be told. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jakub, how did you find out about this this amazing story? Well, just like Pavel mentioned, it really worked uh, just like uh, some myth in Slovak mm -hmm. cultures. We knew a lot about, uh, let's say, Catholic descent back then in Slovakia, but nothing uh, more artistic or philosophic like Marcel did. I just uh, heard a couple things about him because we, we have, while well, he died, we had uh, common friends, but I didn't have a like, complete picture before we started to visit the uh, visit the, the commune in Košice. Okay. Okay. And okay. also uh, uh, our dramaturg asked me because she knew I'm kind of uh, into such a thing, so, so she asked me to work on this thing. Um, and what, did you, what uh, drew you to this subject? What, uh, like, um, it's not like, a, how do I say, uh, hippies in like 70s, 80s uh, Czechoslovakia are not your like common subject. What drew you to this? What did you, what drew you into making this film? Well, I was really fascinated, and I was before that thing uh, asking myself uh, uh, how really that regime uh, impact on mm -hmm. private lives, mm -hmm. or how could you study? Because uh, my parents are actually gener generation of Marcel Strico, so I was kind of really surprised and wondered how that. Uh, secret police activities impact on those people and how it kind of lasts till nowadays. Um, so actually, I, I, I wanted to catch something like life of the others, but on the yeah. documentary basis, you know. Okay. Um, 
so the so the your protagonists they sort of live um, on the edges of society still. Um, was it difficult to convince them to be part of this film, or did they say, "Yeah, sure, make a film about us"? Um, how did you go about convincing them that it's important that they are in your film? Mm, I would say just uh, just like talking to them, it, uh, but still it. Uh, took us a lot of time be, before we became friends. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, the biggest issue between them is still be, uh, that there is not uh, trust among the commune between them. So some of them uh, were saying us, uh, if that is actually in the film, I'm not going to be in that film. And really was kind of, it's not commune anymore, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, and were there any like, like moments in the film where someone said, look, goodbye, or um, I don't want this anymore? I, I got the feeling, for example, um, with, with Marcel's son in the, in the booth when you're recording um, texts of, of Marcel, um, and then you ask questions about his father, he, he basically closes. Um, closes up and doesn't want to talk about his father and just says, no, I'm just going to read these texts and then sort of slowly opens up later on in the film. Um, were there other instances that are not on camera that, that you had to sort of overcome? Well, there is uh, one protagonist who actually ref refused to be in the movie later, but uh, we use it sort of anymore, and he was okay with it after he watched the film. But at one moment, he refused to be in the film because, uh, you know, th those are old people. Some are very difficult personalities. He, he actually doesn't like the name of the film, the commune, because that was... Uh, it was named given by the communists for this operation, so he hated that so much that that was just enough to actually not be in the film and some other strange issues. But after he watched the film, he was okay. We, we actually had just one interview with him filmed. Okay, okay. Pavel, um, I have a question for you. The, the story spans several decades. Um, you've got a lot of protagonists. It's very complex. It's very complex to understand. Um, how did you order all this material? How did you order this story? How did you find like a, a path um, to tell this story? Um, well, um, I, I think it's, it's fair to say that uh, um, a big part of that goes to uh, our editors, um, who actually managed to uh, also to contribute and, and find uh, these paths in this complex material. But for us, it was also uh, what uh, made the made the story and the project intriguing. You know, to have these like multiple perspectives uh, and very different uh, perspectives on the story and the character of Marcel Strico, and to somehow. Uh, put this together and um, yeah, find truth in, in, in that uh, very complex material, as you said. Mm -hmm. um, and coming back um, to, your, to your protagonists, um, was it always clear from the beginning that, it would, that, the, that they would meet again? Like, was that sort of uh, the idea that you had in the beginning? Okay, um, we'll have this reunion of sorts. Um, which you have after the concert, basically. Um, was that an idea that was there from the beginning, or did it come while making the film, while working on the film? Well, uh, you know, when we started meeting these people, uh, one of the very first impressions we had is, is the strange uh, kind of solitude and loneliness that everyone has in its own uh, way. So um, we realized that the idea of, of, of bringing them back together was very intriguing for us, mm -hmm. uh, and we were looking for different options how to how to do it. And um, so, yeah, in, in the very early stages of the of the project, we had this vague idea of, of bringing them together. First, uh, we were thinking about using this place, this old hut, this mm -hmm. this cottage, uh, um, as a as a place where they could uh, potentially meet. But then. Uh, we felt that this wasn't uh, a, a, 
uh, valid option. So then we asked this common friends of theirs who they all trust. Uh, and we, we thought of the character of Mirek as sort of a mediator between, between them, someone who can sort of um, facilitate the dialogue, help, help them actually start talking about, about things that are traumatizing and that yeah, they basically didn't um, talk about since the early 90s, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, and did you get any reactions from your protagonists who after, fin uh, after filming finished, um, um, said, okay, I feel differently about this sit whole situation now, or did they all sort of um, not move, basically, um, in their headspace? Um, or did the film contribute to them maybe, forgiveness is a big word, but maybe to, like, to, to take a first step towards forgiving someone? I think there is some contribution and communication between them uh, works better nowadays, but we didn't really have a chance because of Corona to mm -hmm. really see this, uh, see the impact of the, of the film. Mm -hmm. We played just once in Košice and we didn't really have a chance from, from, the, from that screening to talk and mm -hmm. really see how it, uh, how it goes now. Uh, but what were, the, like, what were the reactions of the protagonists when they saw the film? Did they feel represented? Did they say, oh yeah, okay, this is a story or this is our story or? Well, um, I think I can say most of, uh, most of them are okay and really like the mm -hmm. film and there, there is also one who doesn't like it. <laughs> well, but it, we didn't really have chance to discuss mm -hmm. it with, with it. Yeah, but the screening was, was quite emotional, I think for them, but also for, for locals, because it's uh, quite unusual to have this, because the, the city has a big uh, importance in the film, significance in the film. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, many people know these characters from pubs, from, from concerts, from streets, they are like very uh, recogni recognized. Um, but um, I think it still needs time to, to, to be processed. And um, we are actually looking forward to future screenings mm -hmm. um, back in Košice to really also to somehow uh, see, see the, the feedback because so far there, there was not much of it. Mm -hmm. um, there is a scene in the film um, where Marcel's uh, wife, uh, she, uh, she accepts like an award in his name. Um, and then we, we jump to after the award, she's very lost or she seems very lost in this whole situation. Um, and I just found the, the situation of her having a smoke outside of the, the entrance and the award sort of lying on the ground, um, a very poignant image, I think, um, actually for the whole film. Um, um, because I, I thought the, how do I say, the, uh, uh, all these protagonists' lives was, are somehow damaged in a way, I, f I felt, as, a, as an audience. Um, did you also have this, this feeling while filming? Ah, okay, it's like a, how do I say? Mm, how do I show these people without uh, like revealing too much of their pain? Was that sort of like a thing that you thought about while filming? Or did you, did you, were, you, were you interested in that as aspect, that the, that the, um, that the past and that the, the things that happened um, in the 80s, um, which basically blew the group apart, um, created such huge trauma that it's basically destroyed their lives? Well, I would say we, we were kind of focused on that solitude we are mentioning all the time, but uh, still I felt that there is uh, some chance, maybe hope, it, 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 it would be better, mm -hmm. but uh, some, at some point you need to finish that film, you know, <laughs> and I feel that the that the story kind of continues and maybe in the re reality is 
not so much tragic as in the film, let's say. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I, consider that, I consider that in the film there is still some hope. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of materials that you work with. You have photographs, you have sound recordings, um, you have like documents that you use, um, you have film clips that you use um, that are from the, from the past. Um, how did you go about thinking about these um, documents um, from the past? Were they there from the very beginning? Did you find them while filming or, or like when you researched the film? Um, and you sort of, how do I say, you, you work with them in a very playful manner. Um, was that something that happened in the editing process or was that something that you thought about from the beginning? Well, it was also kind of interesting that uh, we didn't find uh, too much archives about Marcel C. Trico while he was in the politics, so I, I guess we use everything interesting in the film we were uh, we were using the animation to try and, uh, uh, to kind of create that uh, capture the spirit maybe capture, <laughs> capture the spirit of the group you know mm -hmm. uh, in sort of dadaistic way mm -hmm. also their their own sort of naive art <laughs> so and it, but is that something um, you think that the like when looking at their reactions, the protagonist's reactions, did, did you capture that kind of spirit? Or were they like, oh, no, it's just, I don't know. How, did, how were the reactions to that, those elements in the film from them? Well, that's also something that is quite sensitive towards them because uh, with regards to their musical uh, creations, um, you know, their, their band, their music making together have these different stages and so, um, you know, each of them has their own like um, perspective of what was what was representative of what they did. So there are these different objections they, they have, but um, I think in general, yeah, they. It yeah. works for us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. And how long were you? How long were you shooting? Was this like an extensive period or were you like, did you always, because I, I imagine that you had to gain their trust over a longer period of time. Well, I guess we were shooting, let's say two years, mm -hmm. two years, but we actually started to work on, um, on that topic, let's say 2015 and we, uh, we were shooting some small stuff for trailers and teasers for grants, you know, but actually what I would call really filming that lasts for two years, I guess. Okay. And then we were did editing for more than one year. Okay, so, so a, long, a long process. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, and the, the film um, is your debut uh, film, I think, Jakub? It, yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe sort of um, to come back to the to the beginning, like um, did the did the story basically did it fulfil your hopes um, after now having finished the film and having shown the film out what one or two festivals maybe is it sort of starting to where you like or is it realising your dream of this film? Yeah, well, I I feel that uh, it is important film. Mm -hmm. And, but we still didn't have that chance to get that feedback, you know, but mm -hmm. I just uh, screened that film to a uh, couple, uh, couple of film journalists mm -hmm. and that it's it, we are uh, still expecting that stronger feedback. Okay, okay. So the, the, the pandemic has basically also been not good for you distributing the film and getting the film seen? Because we will, be try, uh, we will try to uh, screen this film in uh, with a discussion and mm -hmm. concert that, that, you know, that feedback is really important for mm -hmm. us. So that is something that you, that you planned right from the beginning? Okay, it's a, it's a film that we will show in the, in the city, in the community, um, to basically show, okay, this, this happened in the past and it happened here. Um, yeah. yeah, okay, okay.
Okay. Pavel and Jakub, um, we're coming to the end, unfortunately. Thank you very, very much um, for your insights um, to this fantastic film. Um, and to our audience, um, you can vote for this film um, for the Kino Kino Audience Award, which is sponsored by BR and Dreisat. Um, and you can, can cast your vote on our homepage. Um, if you like this film, tell your friends um, they can watch it until the 23rd of May. Um, and Jakub and Pavel, I wish you all the best for Komuna. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us.